James Dean took a hold of America in a way most heartthrob wannabes only dreamed about. Little did everyone know how real his struggle was. It was only after he died that America and the world really embraced Dean's hard work. This is the tragic, real-life story of James Dean. James Dean was born in Marion, Indiana in 1931 to Mildred and Winton Dean. Winton was a dental technician, a job he found rather dull. When James was about three, the family moved south to Fairmount, where Winton decided to take up bullfrog farming, according to biographer David Dalton. But the farm failed and the Deans returned to Marion, before deciding on their next adventure by relocating to Santa Monica, California. In 1938, though, Mildred Dean was diagnosed with cancer, passing away two years later. At age nine, James found himself riding a train back to Marion with his mother's car. Often. Being back among family gave James time to work through his grief and resume his childhood, working on the family farm. He also attended high school, pursuing sports and drama classes, graduating in 1949. Dean returned to California and majored in drama at UCLA. In 1950, a classmate, James Bella, talked him into being an extra for a Pepsi-Cola commercial. It was Dean's first appearance on television. Soon, he was off. Moving to New York, Dean was accepted by the actor's studio under Lee Strasberg. And in 1951, Dean landed his first role as John in a family theater episode titled Hill No. 1. A series of similar roles carried his career through the early 1950s, but he had his eyes on bigger prizes. In James Dean, Tomorrow Never Comes, biographer Darwin Porter claimed the actor became a typical Hollywood playboy who, quote, would sleep with anybody to get ahead. Women he reportedly bedded included Joan Crawford, Judy Garland, Marilyn Monroe, and Elizabeth Taylor, all starlets with whom it didn't hurt to be seen with in public. Dean did have one more serious relationship with actress Pierre Angeli, whom he met when he was filming his first movie, East of Eden, in 1955. But when the couple separated to work on respective projects, Angeli began dating singer Vic Damone and announced her engagement to him. Supposedly, a brooding Dean sat astride his motorcycle outside the church at the wedding, speeding away as the newlyweds came out. Hollywood's rumor mill began churning out stories that Dean was gay or bisexual. Some of the rumors might have dated back to 1954 when he played a gay character in the play The Immoralist. When asked whether he believed Dean was homosexual, however, writer Hal Hackaday responded, I never heard anything like that. Biography also acknowledges that Dean's sexuality has been a matter of debate. Filmmaker and author Kenneth Anger is best known for concocting mostly fictitious claims of sordid scandals in his book Hollywood Babylon, where he made wild assertions claiming Dean was, quote, kept by an aging TV producer producer, among other things. As a result, these rumors about Dean have become an urban legend attached to his legacy. James Dean was the epitome of the moody, tortured artist. You're tearing me apart! As reported on RealUnexplainedMysteries.com, Dean became known as the little bastard on set due to his rebellious nature, sudden mood swings, and disruptive behavior. According to Dean's friends Lou Bracker and Phil Stern, Jack Warner of Warner Brothers gave Dean the nickname for refusing to come out of his trailer while filming East of Eden. At the time, Dean was also developing a taste for speedy sports cars with hot rod engines. Warner had forbidden him from racing during filming. In retaliation, when Dean bought his infamous Porsche Spyder 550, he had Little Bastard painted on the vehicle. Giant began filming in May of 1955, after James Dean had already had starring roles in three television shows and another movie, Rebel Without a Cause. The actor was buying more and more cars and even began racing professionally. According to biographer Don Graham, as Giant started filming, director George Stevens made sure Dean's contract prohibited racing. But that didn't stop Dean from purchasing the Porsche Spyder 550 on September 21st. Stevens warned Dean that he was going to kill somebody with that car. George Perry, author of James Dean, wrote that Stevens told Dean, You can never drive this car on the lot again. You're going to kill a carpenter or an actor or somebody. On September 30th, Dean set out in his spider for a race in Salinas, California. With him was mechanic Rolf Wutherich. Dean received a speeding ticket, and about two hours later, Dean saw another car making a left turn onto the road. According to Wutherich, Dean told him, quote, That guy's gotta stop. Instead, the two vehicles crashed head-on. Wutherich was thrown from the car and survived, while the other driver, Donald Turnipseed, escaped with minor injuries. Dean was trapped in the car as it spun in the air before hitting the ground. He was pronounced dead upon arrival at Paso Robles War Memorial Hospital and is buried in his home state of Indiana. Dean Spider was briefly put on display before generating stories about a curse, which resulted in injuries and deaths of the owners. The car itself was in transit when it mysteriously disappeared in 1960, but a Fox Sports report in 2015 identified a man, Sean Riley, who believed his father and others, including Batmobile creator George Barris, hid the car in Washington state. Though Barris later claimed he did indeed own the vehicle, its whereabouts remain unknown. Dean received Best Actor Oscar nominations in 1955 and 1956 for his roles in East of Eden and Giant. 
and posthumously, a whopping 23 books and 14 movies have come out about the actor, according to Internet Movie Database. And that doesn't include the times the icon has been portrayed in other films. In 1996, he was remembered on a U.S. postage stamp, and his hometown of Marion, Indiana, celebrates his life each September with a festival, including a Dean lookalike contest and, of course, a showing of Dean's movies. Chris Epstein, author of The Birthplace Book, a guide to birth sites of famous people, places, and things, writes that visitors can check out the Fairmount Historical Museum, which displays the pants Dean Warren Giant, as well as the speeding ticket he received the day he died. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more grunge videos about your favorite celebrities are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.